What is the matter with you? My father asks when I pull the chair from under my mother about to sit at the dinner table. She lands on her bottom on thin carpet, somehow unhurt, just like in the cartoons. What is wrong with you? My father asks when I almost strangle the cat, tying one end of a piece of clothesline around its neck, the other end to a doorknob. The cat chokes himself by walking away, tightening the simple half hitch, unaware that someone did this to him, that it was me. How can my father not know what is wrong? He's the one who has to untie the knot. We have this comfort, the Reverend George Austin said of his second son. He cannot be a bad or a wicked child. Surely my father, a lawyer, not a Church of England clergyman, knows what is wrong. It's my mother who won't see it, who gives me a hand puppet for a gift. I want to be bad. I want to be Dennis the Menace. I want to be Lucy Van Pelt of Peanuts, scowling, bad-tempered, slugging her brother with her fist. I want to be mischievous, get into fights, climb other people's fences, and crawl through their cellars, go where I should not, do what I am told not to. If I am good, it will be my choice. If you are defective, you are virtuous and cheerful. You do not complain. It is a handicap that in the game of life, you overcome by perseverance and by trying hard, by managing, by coping. If you are a girl, you cannot be deformed. That is for men who don't have to be pretty, who don't want to be beautiful. The Hunchback of Notre Dame, Richard III, the Elephant Man. Handicapped women can be deaf and pretty, blind and pretty, pretty in their wheelchair, or pretty and limping with the brace on the withered leg. That is the closest to me that I have seen, awkward and asymmetrical. It is inconceivable to be what I am. I cannot exist, this square root of minus one. I am an imaginary number that no one can imagine. The woman whose genitals are mutilated, whose clitoris and labia are cut out, what pleasure can she have in the act of sex? At best, her scarred flesh feels nothing. At worst, shrinks again from the razor's slice. Yet she can conceive and bear children the purpose of sex. If she survives the trauma of birth, she can nurse her infants, palm cradling fragile skull, bathe them and change their diapers, tie their shoes, hold her pinky out for tiny fingers to clutch. The two mutilated penises on my four shortened arms with their inflexible wrists have no satisfaction, no climax and resolution, no completion of the acts generated by my thoughts. They cannot grasp or swivel or bend. They are impotent, receiving the brain's clear, unceasing signals, sending gibberish in return, shooting blanks. What is the matter, we ask the stroke victim. She forms words in her head but we hear only fricatives and plosives, see only the working lips, spittle bubbling in the corners of her mouth. I see the messages in my mind, thumbs up, little circle of okay, hitch a ride, back of the hand, palm out, stop. They're this close, fingers crossed, here's the church, here's the steeple, cat's cradle, Eensy weensy spider, curl digit come here, air quotes, point to it, shoot a gun, gag me with a spoon, two please, peace, victory, snap, the finger. It happens without consciousness as I talk. My arms lift, flailing the deformities, like yelling slowly in English at someone who speaks only Russian or Chinese. If I flap with enough force in two dimensions, 
Maybe I can shake the meanings down from my brain, along the nerves of my arms, and out through the fixed static shapes into fullness. What's wrong? Calm down, you say, at my frantic, wide-arcing, silent shouts. The philosopher said, tragedy is when I cut my finger. Comedy is when you fall into an open sewer and die. <laughs> I'm in over my head, gulping in mouthfuls of waste, my raised arms signaling SOS. Or is it LOL? Being bad is like giving birth, hard labor, pushing an effort that lasts for days, years. Why do people tell you the struggle is to be good? So much easier to be passive, accept the insults, agree with the lies, keep your mouth shut, don't tie knots or move chairs. Why would I want to hurt the cat, friendly and graceful, who battles the marauding upright vacuum cleaner and howls his hunger for the roasting leg of lamb? Why would I want to kill my mother, who loves me, who gave me life? All I want is to feel, hold in one hand, get a grip, climb a rope. The people whose faces batten down with rage when I don't manage, when I can't cope, when I take too long, when I won't accept my place in the back, in the dark, in the corner, when I stand in the center, in the light, on stage, their content lifts me up like an open, like an ocean wave, and slams me down head first onto hard sand. Those are the ones I should hang from the doorknob, kick their chairs away. But I don't. I can't make the gestures or tie the knots. I fight back with the only weapons I have: impotent words, shit, the f bomb. What is the purpose of a knot that can't be loosened? What is the point of being loved if you cannot feel love? Does the damaged mother love the children she bears? When her baby girls are older, she will mutilate them as her mother did to her so they can be loved as she was loved by a man of her people. My two mutilated penises are not infertile. They can press keys, they can write, they give birth to my mind's conception, produce a whole family for me to love. A warrior husband, tall and slender, hard-faced and elegant, and two children, a boy and a girl. And my husband's companion, a beautiful youth, because I will have more than my share. The man who would never choose me in life, and his partner too. What is wrong with you, my husband will ask my son, who becomes a scientist, not a soldier, and who desires women, not men. He does not have to be my lover, just my son. There is nothing the matter with my daughter. She is tall and strong and brave, like her father. I will never hurt her, as my mother did not hurt me, not by choice, not on purpose. I am as bad as I can be. I don't do favors or go out of my way. I don't iron or dust. When I am incapable, I am shameless. I do not apologize for my lack of fingers, of wrists, of quickness and agility, for needing help, for existing. I tell the truth. I bargain for compassion, but will settle for a show of respect. I am cruel, a good match for my warlord husband. I kill his perfect companion, the one we share, because I can, because I am a writer. What is the point of creating if I can't also destroy? Why give birth if you can't give death? Later, I write a new companion for my husband alone. I'm too old to share. Only to my husband do I apologize, make amends. He is mine, my creation, who fights for me always takes my side. What is the matter is something we never say as we make the gentle love of tired middle age. We know the answer. Fear and excitement keep me riding the rough waves of contempt. Or is it just disapproval? Swaying and rocking, rising and falling, like lying in bed after a day at the beach. 
I did that, I think, finding the strength to do it again, better than eating the shit of the lies. Because I cannot make a fist, or shoot a gun, or cut you with a knife, or pick your pocket, doesn't mean I am a saint. God bless us, everyone, is not my message. <laughs> Eat shit, one more. Eat shit and die is my message. Except for my own progeny, my perfect family, that I have written into life with my broken nubs of fingers, who love me, whom I love with all my clogged, bottled up, locked in passion, for whom I am made whole. <laughs>